Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Game, and it's Sydney Mounds, what are the gaming drag today? I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Repeat Remake Sissel's Path. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you are up and let's go. Let's get back into this silliness. All right. <clears throat> well, my friends made me go straight home afterwards. They said my fragile and womanly heart can take such a horrible situation and, and that they take care of this themselves. Last I saw them, they were going to withdraw cash to those scary men at the bay. Keep those scary men at bay. I think they said something about meeting them near the lake at night. Ginny buried her face in her hands in a poor attempt to hide her snickering. Thankfully, her shaking shoulders seemed to convince the interviewer that she was descending into another bout of hysterical sobbing. There, there! Uh -uh. There, there! Not to worry. Everything is going to be okay. I'm sure the police will find your friend safe and sound. I can't remember if the interviewer was uh, male or female. Hmm. Oh, God. I should have stopped them that night. Who knows where they could be right now? <laughs> Ginny inhaled sharply and paused for dramatic effect. <laughs> the feed cut back to the news reporter, who stared gravely into the camera. What a brave soul. She should be commended for speaking out in the face of such injustice. <laughs> what the fuck? Shown now is an eyewitness sketch of the two men suspected of orchestrating the incident. <laughs> they are believed to be armed and extremely dangerous, with possible ties to the Lorelei family. When asked to make statements on the current situation, the family declined to answer. If you need information on the disappearance of these individuals, please call the authorities at... We all stared at the broadcast in stunned silence. That was a bit much, wasn't it? Teacher's having too much fun with this. Behind us, Philip was quietly sipping his coffee while attempting to glare holes into the TV screen. Owen grinned and patted his shoulder sympathetically. You all right there, buddy? You're taking this very well for someone who... You're taking this very well for someone who allegedly has more money than brain cells. And you're looking awfully calm for someone who pissed their pants. I'm proud of your newfound self-control. Owen deftly dodged a booted kick to his shins. Okay, okay, but in her defense, it probably helps that the public sees us as helpless and naive victims. That's part of the strategy, yeah? This is defamation of my character. I will have no part in this. In a far corner of the room, Morse watched the broadcast while scratching his chin thoughtfully. At least he tried before realizing he was still wearing that stupid oversized scarf over his face. He coughed loudly and readjusted his disguise. It's not a bad strategy, in all honesty. After the PR nightmare via Very Legal Seafoods, the last thing the Laura Life family wants is to be associated with the disappearance of four missing idiots. Four missing kids. Ginny is spreading the public narrative that those thugs attacked Herschel with the intention to also extort money out of Owen. Owen nodded. Right, in terms of my safety goes both ways. They don't interfere with Lorelai family affairs, and they don't mess with me. If we convince everyone that those two thugs violated those terms first, my father's side of the family has full leverage to take action against them. Who would have thought the solution to all our problems was just plain old lying? Wish we, would have, wish we would have thought of that sooner. This will certainly put pressure on them, but cornered animals tend to grow desperate and dangerous. We'll have to tread carefully. Herschel, who had been sitting silently in the back of the room with a worry-stricken frown, finally spoke up. This whole plan? <clears throat> this whole plan makes me nervous. Why is that? It's your plan, isn't it? Herschel sighed and crossed his arms. That's exactly why I'm nervous. I'm putting all you kids in danger. Those thugs will probably target Ginny at some point for outright lying to reporters. And who knows what they'll do to the rest of you? Sissel scowled and looked like he was torn between comforting Herschel and calling him an idiot. He settled with slapping him on the back hard enough to send the older rabbit tumbling off his chair. Boss, we're already in danger. If your plan can help us even the odds, I'm happy to bet on it. Not a bad plan, either. In this situation, it makes more sense for the thugs to keep us alive. Anyway, we all agreed to help. There's no one, so there's no use chickening out on us now. Herschel frowned as he picked himself up off the floor. I know that, but... <clears throat> I know that, but... And I'm pretty sure Teach is having the time of her life right now. Come on, boss, have a little faith. Speak of the devil... My phone suddenly buzzed with an incoming call from Jenny. The devil tapped my screen and put the call on speaker. Look, guys, I'm on TV! 
Philip immediately bunny hopped across the room and snatched the phone from my hands. Jenny! Jenny, Jenny, Jenny. I've got some stern words for you about your little on screen performance. I thought you were supposed to be bad at words. Oh, I'm sure your fragile and womanly heart can take a bit of criticism, you little. This, of course, descended into a furious squabble with Owen hopping in to try and keep and peace keep, but only added more fuel to the fire. I probably won't be getting my phone back for a while. Cecil glanced up from the chaos and flashed Herschel a reassuring smile. See? We're doing fine so far. Relax, boss. Everything's gonna be okay. Herschel remained unconvinced. I wish I had your optimism. Fine, but if anything happens, don't be afraid to bail. Forget the whole giving those thugs what they're due. Your safety is our top priority here. He hesitantly placed a hand on Cecil's shoulder and pulled him close. You gotta promise me that you'll stay safe, alright? Otherwise, I'm gonna run fresh out of family. Cecil looked taken aback, but smiled. Same to you, you dickhead. When we're driving off into the night alone, alright? Hmm. Touche. Uh, touche. After a beat, Morse pulled Herschel and Cecil aside for a private conversation in the living room. As Cecil's ever dutiful and nosy boyfriend, I decided to sneak upstairs and listen in with my ear pressed against the door. It sounded like he wanted to discuss what their ideal outcome would be regarding those thugs. I held my breath and opened the apartment door by a smidge to peer inside. After we cut them off from the family support, they will be vulnerable. Just two men with guns, as Herschel put it, but they could be dealt with. Dealt with? Morse nodded gravely. That's what I wanted to ask you two about, seeing as you face the brunt of their crimes. Do you care what happens to these thugs afterwards? What What do you plan to do with them? Morse fell silent. His hawk-like eyes narrowed into slits. Cecilia was my friend, and they killed her. Truth be told, I plan to just put a bullet between their eyes and be done with this whole ordeal. Ursula and Cecil exchanged uncomfortable looks. I don't really... <clears throat> I don't really enjoy the idea of putting blood on your hands. Moore shook his head firmly. My hands are already soaked. The blood of my friend's killers would be an improvement, all things considered. What will the alternative be? Moore shrugged. A jail would be a jail would be a classic. I suppose I can pull a few strings for a more ironic punishment. I could saddle them with their own crippling debt and have them suffer through the process of paying it off for the rest of their lives. I'm sorry to put this on your shoulders, but it didn't feel right to move forward without hearing your input. The choice is yours. Cecil, who had been staring down into his hands quietly this whole time, spoke up. I guess the right choice would be something other than killing them. But to tell you the truth, I don't care. He looked up and glared. I don't care what happens to those, to those two thugs. They killed my mom. They've hurt so many people. His gaze turned to Herschel. And they hurt you. This might make me a horrible person, but I don't care if these thugs live or die. I just want them gone. I want to live the rest of my life knowing that they can't hurt anyone else. Cecil nodded towards Morse. I'll leave this in your hands. Do whatever's most convenient. Herschel sighed and scratched his head nervously. Well, I can't say I'd lose any sleep if those two disappeared overnight. I suppose my answer is the same. Morse bowed his head in acknowledgement. Very well. Thank you for your answer. Why don't you go rejoin the others? We've got a long day ahead of us tomorrow. I scrambled from my spot at the apartment door as footsteps approached. Apparently I didn't scramble quite fast enough because the door swung open and bopped me hard across the nose. Ow! As I curled up on the floor and clutched at my bruised face, I heard feet shuffling around me. Adrian, what are you doing on the floor? Oh, uh, I uh, was just checking in to see how you're doing. You know, like a good dutiful boyfriend should. Cecil's mouth stretched into a wry smile as he poked me with his toe. Why am I not surprised? Are you doing okay? That was a pretty heavy conversation. You heard all that, huh? I'm fine, I think. It's hard to describe. I think I feel worse about not feeling worse about it, if that makes sense. I stumbled back onto my feet and held Cecil's hands firmly. Hey, it's a tough decision. If it were me, I'd have trouble mustering up any sympathy for those debt collectors, too. Especially when they're still trying to hunt us down. It's okay to want to feel safe. You don't have to feel guilty about it. Cecil squeezed my hands with an appreciative smile. Huh. Thanks, Adrian. 
I should have. You should I expect you to pop up randomly to comfort me every time something mildly uncomfortable happens? I uh, can't stop if it's getting too. I can stop if it's getting too much. Cecil laughed and pulled me close, planting a firm smooch on my cheek. No, that's very sweet. Well, I think I could get used to having an emotional support boyfriend. We both jumped as someone cleared their throat loudly behind us. <clears throat> and gentlemen, if we could clear the doorway, please, and maybe tone down the PDA just a smidge, that would be fantastic. Oh, oh, sorry. Wow, you're really a sparkle of sunshine, aren't you? Morris inhaled sharply as he tried to summon all the patience his feeble body could muster. Teenagers. Hey, uh, <clears throat> I keep doing the wrong damn voice for Herschel. Okay, so you're used to doing the other one. Hey, I don't want to hear that coming from you of all people. You were even worse back in the day. Those were dark times. Herschel shuddered. I still remember that time I caught, I caught you and your boyfriend in the laundry room and you were supposed to be babysitting me. Herschel McDermott, if you finish that sentence, I will shove you down the stairs and laugh at every bounce. Ah. Uh, when we returned to the lounge area, my phone was still being held hostage by everyone as they took turns squabbling with Jenny. The conversation had evolved into a video call at some point. It looked like Jenny was strolling down a quiet street as she debated with Philip on the ethics of the, uh, on the ethics of exaggerating for the camera. As we entered her field of view, Jenny's face brightened and she waved furiously. Adrian, Sissel, how's it feel to be officially kidnapped? Hope you're taking it better than Philip. Come on, give me some details. I want to know your woes in case they interview me again after this is all over. Uh, Philip shoved my phone into my hands and crossed his arms with a huff. She's gone mad with power. Maybe you can talk some sense into her. Jenny smirked into the camera while she crossed the street deftly crossed the street deftly dodging a few cars as she did so. You think I've gone mad? You should have, should have seen Grand when she was questioned by the police. Oh, Mrs. Corlice doesn't know the truth, does she? I hope we're not stressing her out too much. Too late. She's got into trouble this morning for threatening the cops with a fate worse than death if they didn't bring you home safe and sound. Behind us, Herschel chuckled and scratched his head. Yeesh, old Corlise hasn't mellowed out at all with, age, with old age, has she? The sun will grow cold before she stops freaking out about her kids. Oh, she threatened the cops for you too, Herschel. Something about how one of her students is going to be the next culinary arts champion and you had to be there to see him win. Herschel and Cecil exchanged surprised glances. The older rabbit cleared his throat and stared at the floor quietly. Cecil tried to flash him an encouraging smile, but Herschel didn't quite, didn't quite meet his gaze. Oh, is that right? Jenny squinted and leaned closer to her phone. Are you two having a fight? Huh? Nah, we're just... we're not. Paused awkwardly. Are we? No. The boss just can't get it through his thick skull that people still enjoy having him around. Don't worry, though, Teach. I'm clobbering away as hard as I can. Truth will sink in eventually. Well, clobber harder. You can practically cut this tension with a knife. I'll do my best. I never realized my moping sessions ran in, my f ran in the family. Herschel flopped down onto a nearby sofa with a wry smile. Yeesh, you kids are ruthless. I'm still recovering from your aggressively supportive breakfast. Cecil grinned and gave Herschel a friendly punch to the shoulder. Tell you what, I'll try to be less of an ass if you promise to watch me compete in the Nationals. But say yes, I'll be there and I mean it. And mean it. Herschel laughed and finally lifted his head. Yeah, I'll be there and of course I'll be there. I'm not going to miss seeing my nephew kick ass on the national stage, are you kidding? A warm, bubbly feeling filled my chest as I watched the little exchange. Things were getting better, little by little. I glanced down at my phone and grinned as Jenny flashed me a discreet thumbs up. Glad to have you back, Jenny. Ugh, don't get all sappy on me now. I frowned and leaned closer to my phone. Jenny had been walking down a quiet street for most of the conversation, and I'm certain I saw that dark car in the background at least twice now. At the moment, she was currently turning around a corner and that car was quietly keeping pace behind her. I gulped and silently waved my hand to get Morse's attention as I continued talking into the phone. Uh, Jenny? Are you being followed? Huh? I don't think so. I'm in the middle of the street in broad daylight. There's no way it'd be so... The car behind her suddenly surged forward. There was just enough time for me to catch Jenny's eyes wide in shock before the car door flew open, knocking her out, knocking her phone out of her hand. The video call spun around with a loud thunk amidst Jenny's frightened shout before abruptly cutting off. Jenny? Jenny! I shook my phone furiously as panic flooded my lungs. What happened? It sounded like she was getting dragged off somewhere. Fuck, did those thugs get you already? Behind us, Herschel leapt to his feet and shot a desperate glance at Morris. 
Informant was already on his phone, whispering urgently to someone. He nodded and motioned for Herschel to follow him outside. Tracking her GPS as we speak. Come on, there's a chance we can catch her before they run off. Cecil and I hurried after them, but Herschel stopped us at the door. No, you kids stay here. I'm not putting you in any more danger than I already have. Ginny, Ginny's our friend. We're not going to just sit back and do nothing. What's a couple of kids do, going to do against two thugs with guns? We saved you, didn't we? Herschel grimaced. Cecil crossed his arms and glared. Morris cleared his throat loudly as he looked up from his phone. We don't have time... Ugh. Excuse me. We don't have time for this. Philip, Owen, you stay here and monitor the news. Keep an eye on the next stage of our plan with the media. You three... He motioned at Herschel, Cecil, and I with a sigh. You can come along, but you will do as you're told and not place a single toe out of line, understood? Cecil and I nodded before following them out the door towards Morse's shabby little car. As he frantically loaded ourselves inside, I gripped Cecil's hand tightly. Do you... do you think Jenny's all right? Cecil nodded solemnly. She'll be fine. Knowing too, she's probably putting up one hell of a fight right now. Why would I go home? Jenny, as it turned out, was putting up a fight in her own unique Jenny-esque way. At the moment, she was tied up inside a small, dingy, ap dingy apartment with two, two thugs standing over her in the bouts of an intense interrogation. Or at least an attempted interrogation. <laughs> Please, mister, let me go. I've got a doctor's appointment today and my grand's gonna be so worried. The shrewd thug rubbed his temples and let out a deep sigh through gritted teeth. Alright, I'm going to pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. But before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout out to our lovely bronze tier patrons. Thank you all for all I do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our silver tier patron, Cade Silverman. Thank you for going a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. And thank you to our gold tier patron, Tresum Guy. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to Ultimate Tier. Anyway, if you all want to get your names in the credits and get access to all of our not safe for work contents as little as $5 already, I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye.